I'm on the guard stand. These two girls come out looking so day sexy. I get bumped off the guard stand and I start picking up towels and I make my way over to these girls. One is named Nikki and the other one is named D. But I'm trying to holler at Nikki. I start talking to these girls for like 15 minutes. Then I'm like, hey, y'all want anything? Like it's on me. Water, Shirley Temple, some champagne and dinner in front of the fireplace. Like whatever y'all need, I got you. But we'll take two Shirley Temples. I come back with these drinks, there's some random dude sitting next to them, trying to spit game. I'm thinking to myself, I hope you ain't trying to holla at the same girl I'm trying to holla at, bruh. Cause I can make you disappear. I'm fresh out. I know people that know people. And I'll make it look like an accident too. When the cops show up and start asking questions, I'd be like, Officer, we was all hanging out, I looked down at my phone, I look up, he stabbed himself. The stab wound was in his back. The dude slipped and fell backwards on a knife. There's 47 stab wounds in his back though. He's a clumsy dude, I don't know. My shift's over, I go to wardrobe, change into my street clothes, and then go back out to the pool deck. Now just doing that alone, I can get written up for. No fraternizing with the guests. Next day comes. These girls are by the pool deck all day long. So same deal, whenever I get free time, I go over and talk, me, Danny, D, and Nikki. My shift's over, street clothes, back out to the pool deck. See, here's the thing, up until this point, I've never hooked up with a guest. I'm not trying to get fired over smooching with this girl. We're all chilling out next to a cabana. All of a sudden, D and Dan start going at it. And Nikki's sitting there like, so yeah, this is actually our last night here. We're leaving tomorrow morning. My parents, they came with us. They got other places they need to go. You came with your parents? Thought y'all came here like by yourself. I gotta kiss this girl, but I can't do it out here on the pool deck. Hard Rock got cameras out the butt. So I'm like, yo, let me walk you to your room one time. So I snatch her up, I walk her around the corner to the stairwell. We walk up about three floors, and then she stops and leans up against the wall and just looks at me like, what's up? And I start moving in, and I get closer and closer, and she closes her eyes, and I close my eyes, and I kind of just lean there next to her like an idiot. I'm just leaning next to her for a good like four minutes. And then I took her back to her room. Next day, I had to work at 2 p.m. At 11 o'clock, jump in my car, drive to work. I look to my left as soon as I walk out onto the pool deck. First table next to me, Nikki and Nikki's mom and dad. I'm like, yo, y'all got room for one more? I look at Nikki and she is triggered. Then she goes, I'm going to the bathroom. D, come with me. And that's another thing, why do girls always go to the bathroom together? That's always confused me. Are all public restrooms for ladies escape rooms? And it's like a puzzle where you need two or three people to figure out how to escape? Anyways, the girls go off, so it's me, Dan, and the parents. And the dad looks at me and he goes, So, I understand you've been canoodling with my daughter the last few days. And I start getting scared, I'm looking at all the exits, because he knows I work here. I can't think of a scenario where he finishes this sentence and it ends positively. So then he looks at me and he goes, Why didn't you kiss my daughter last night? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What dad says this? And I give it a few more seconds to see if he's gonna be like, Haha, just kidding. This dude is dead serious. And I look to the mom for help and she ain't trying to help me. She has her hands on her hips like, mm. What kind of freaky family is this? <laughs> wait, well, s well, sir. I. It's just the good guy complex. We leave in 30 minutes. Throw the nice guy out the window because I'm not about to be on the plane for the next four hours with my daughter all moody and depressed and sad. So Nikki and Dee come back and they sit down. So I walk Nikki up to the lobby. It pro probably the worst place I could have taken her because everybody at front desk knows me. The GM walks through here all the time. Like I shouldn't even be seen in regular clothes hanging out with guests. Danny and Dee find us and they sit next to us and as soon as they sit down They're rolling over us Danny's feet are like in my face I'm like pushing his feet out of my face as they make out They're just going at it Me and Nikki are just sitting here in silence Because I'm nervous AF And scared too I'm cold Never kissed a girl before And the dad walks into the lobby Where's my daughter in that boy? How much you wanna bet he ain't that yellow turd ain't even kissed her yet? Dolores, fetch me my shotgun. 
You're just mean mugging me. The dad gets in the line for front desk, waiting to check out. So I look at Nikki and I'm like, Nikki, let's let's take a walk. We start walking. I glance up and I make eye contact with her dad, and he mouths the words, "You better kiss her." Dad is gonna kill me if I don't make out with his daughter. When you pass front desk off to the right, they have these rooms and they're phone booths, but they're like rooms with just a single phone in it and one tiny little light. Take her in there, grab her, pin her up against the wall. Boom! Oh my god, her lips were so soft, y'all. Oh my god. You know when you go to Krispy Kreme and you catch the glazed donuts right off the production line when they pour that hot glaze right on and you bite into it? That's exactly what it was like. One day I'm at Five Guys, I order my food. Behind the register over at the burger station, I see this kid that I used to go to high school with. You know how you see kids from school out in public and you try to unsee them? I thought about doing that for a second, but then I thought, I might be able to get some free food out of this in the future. I don't know. I don't know, like he might give me a free milkshake or something. So I go over, I'm waiting, like I'm looking on Twitter, and he comes over and hands me the bag, and I'm like, What's up, Alvin? I know you? Yeah, uh, English class, senior year. And, and Anthony, Anthony, right? Adonde. Adonde, that's, hey, hey, Nick, uh, can you give me a ride home? So I'm like, all right, where do you live? I'm right here in Winter Gordon. His shift is over, we get in my car, I'm driving him to his house. I have my phone in the little cubby hole in the middle, he grabs it and calls himself. I probably should start putting a lock on my phone at some point. I see this in the corner of my eye and I'm kind of just like, yeah, you working with the feds, bro? Don't be just snatching my phone up like that. Then he goes, make a ride right here, Nick. This dude had me turn into the hood. Diggle Martin in Trinidad did not prepare me for this hood. You know when you go to Disney, and you see a parade, and you know how people are lying in the streets? Imagine that in a neighborhood, but half these people don't have shirts on, and there's random washing machines on street corners. Alvin is not saying a word. He's all talkative until we turn to his street. As soon as we turn into his hood, it's like that Disney parade that I was telling you about, but you're the only float going down the street. A few days later, I start getting the itch. I need, I need some Five Guys, bruh. I go back to Five Guys. Guess who's at the burger station behind the register making burgers? I gotta pay for my burger. He's like, no, 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 He's good, just give it to him. Free food, now you're talking to me on a spiritual level. He goes back there, he makes the burger, he hands me the bag and he goes, hey Nick, I get a ride? He just gave me free food. Like, how do I not? I give him a ride home. The same 50 people are just outside. I don't go to Five Guys for like three days after that. Then I get a phone call. Hey dog, you give me a ride home? So now he starts calling me and asking for a ride home. That becomes like a regular thing. I don't got time to be Ubering people. Every time he would call, I would get up, go to Five Guys. He would give me free food, take him home, Every time I drop them and turn around and have to leave, I feel like these dudes are sizing me up harder and harder each time. So now me all paranoid, I'm home, checking Google, looking at the Batmobile schematics, thinking of how I can armor proof my car. I kind of figured out a schedule and I would try to go on days that he wouldn't work, like I'd peek around the corner, look through the glass. I don't see him inside. Turn around, he's already in my car. He's got my iPod in his hand, he's like queuing up the next song. <sighs> I'm home editing one day, and I get a call from him. Hello. Hey, Nick. I got bad news. I gotta move. Yes! I, I mean, I mean, no, no, no. That's terrible. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be living around here no more. What, where are you moving to? I gotta move over to the east side of town, bro. I'm like 40 minutes away, Nick. I'm trying to transfer to a Five Guys over there, so you know, come holla at me. So Alvin moves, and I've not heard from him since, not a single call. I think this whole experience has left me traumatized though, cause like every time I think about going into a Five Guys, I'm always like lurking in the bushes, peeking in through the windows, making sure Alvin's not at this location before I walk in.
I'm laying around the house naked. I don't even know if that's important to the story. But anyways, my phone rings. It's my boy. I'm like, hello? Swoos, I met this girl on Call of Duty. Get online and play with us right now. I don't have COD, and I'm not about to spend $60 to download it just so I can play with some girl. Actually, you know what? Send me a link to her Instagram. Let me see what this girl looks like. Okay, I just sent you the link. Scroll down. Let me know when you see the booty. As soon as I saw the picture he was talking about, I was like, pew, deathmatch? What's, what, what's, what, what mode? And obviously, there's a handful of thirsty dudes in this party chat. This girl was dropping 50 kills per game. So I add her on Xbox, and then we add each other on Snapchat, Instagram, blah, 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 phone number. Every now and then, I'll see this dude pop up on her social. So one day we're on Call of Duty, we're playing, I'm sucking as usual, shooting at my own teammates, and I go, this dude that be popping up on your gram, is that your mans? It's complicated. Okay, I was just curious. So fast forward a few months, I moved to LA, post a video on YouTube about it, she sees it and texts me like, you moved to LA? I'm visiting LA in a few months. I know, so many good food places. Let's hang out when I get there. So I call up my boy like, yo, your Call of Duty girl wants to hang out. Um, do you know how much hatred I have toward you, RN? I just want to eat a bowl of spaghetti off that booty. She hits me up when she gets to town. I go pick her up in the Uber. We Uber over to Venice Beach. We go to some restaurant right next to Coldstone for you stalkers. So then I bring up like, yo, what's the situation with your mans? It's... I don't, I don't even know. We're, we're on, we're off. The easy answer, we're over. Okay. I was just curious. And then right after she tells me that, this girl just starts throwing back shots. She starts drinking like a fish at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So we finish eating and she looks at me and goes, Let's go back to your place. And then I go, <laughs> Negro, you finna die. My boy calls me. I pick up and I'm trying to talk in code. I'm like, yeah, bro, uh, can't talk right now. I have the plans to the Death Star, and I'm headed back to Alderaan. Just, just answer me, yes or no, okay? The booty's, fo it's not Photoshop, right? The booty's real? Is it nice and perky, and can you bounce quarters off of it all day? Affirmative. Is the booty 10 out of 10 IGN? Mm-hmm. <sighs> you wouldn't even know she existed, if not for me. Okay, bro, I gotta go, bye! We get to my place, this girl beelines right to the kitchen and starts drinking some more. We start playing some Mario Kart, then she gets a notification on her phone. Oh my glob, my boyfriend's trying to hack my Snapchat! I thought you said you was single, bruh. It's complicated, Adande! So she runs out to the balcony, calls her boyfriend, and starts smoking. I go into my bedroom and lay down. Back at the restaurant, I had half a shot of Patron. It all hit me at once. The room's starting to spin. I'm a lightweight. She gets off the phone, comes into my bedroom, and then straddles me on the bed. What are you doing? It's okay. I cheat on him. He cheats on me. It's fine. It's not that kind of show over here. Sorry about it. If I wanted you, I could have you. I'm not gonna lie, it was kinda hot with her talking like this, but she went in, and right before her lips touched, I was like, NINE! A, you lied about having a boyfriend. B, you probably taste like ashtray. You ain't getting none of this candy. A few weeks later, her and her boyfriend officially broke up. And now that you're all caught up, let me give you the update. She plays a lot of Overwatch now. She's single, and she's coming to town in a few weeks. So this may or may not be the last time you hear about Call of Duty Booty Girl. Necro, you finna die. Interrupt real quick. Who's doing crack up here? I know we're in Vegas, guys, but word. Alex. Chilling at home, playing PlayStation Quattro. My boy Gary calls, says he's having a kickback. Gary lives 10 houses down, so I drive over. Gary's there, his little sister Mia's there. And then this girl walks out on the patio, looking all hard body karate. Who is this? Oh, that's Jessica. She actually, she lived right next to you. I never seen this girl, not once, not a day in my life. This girl was bad. She jumps in the hot tub. Then, this other dude walk out. Who is that? Oh, that's Jessica's boyfriend. <sighs> so now I'm over here thinking, I could be her side piece. I don't have a problem with that. Then this dude and Jessica start making out horde. One of the sexiest girls I've ever seen in my life. She's probably living next to me while she was single, but see, that's the problem. Y you cute girls don't never come outside. See, the internet turned everybody into hermits. Girls, how many of y'all are outside your house multiple times a week like, 
Angela, just washing my Mitsubishi Eclipse. <laughs> That's the only time y'all go outside. That or to walk your dog. That's it. Or, or, or hold on. Or y'all go in your backyard in a bikini and do that self-timer bikini picture for Instagram. And even that bikini pic nowadays, that's not even taken in the backyard. Now, that's the bathroom mirror selfie. I can't holla at you if you inside watching Riverdale and Disney Plus all day long. Now, Gary is one of my best friends. He lives in a neighborhood. We're at each other's house literally every other day. And something happened that I wasn't expecting to happen. Mia, Mia was one of those girls you never looked at because she was your boy's sister. So there was always that invisibility cloak. So me, Gary, and Mia are always hanging out when I go to their place. Whenever Gary starts coming over, Mia starts tagging along. Matter of fact, I've talked about Mia in the past on some old videos. Uh, there's a video I posted called Crazy Pool Party. That was Mia. The older she got, the more aggressive she got. So the girl I was talking about in that video, Megan, that was really Mia. So one night, I go over to Gary's house. And when you have that neighbor that you're really tight with, you don't text before you show up. It's almost pointless. You just go to their house. So I walk in and I always announce myself like, hello, the Negro's here. I always say something funny like that. I just yell into their house, you know, so that mostly so they don't shoot me. Gary's dad walks out. Hey, Adante. Gary's not here, but Mia's here. She's in her room. I'm gonna go to the complete other side of the house and do my taxes with some noise canceling headphones on. Okay, have fun, bye. Go into Mia's room. She puts on Despicable Mia some background noise and we start playing Uno. As we're playing, she says, by the way, I broke up with Gaston about uh, three weeks ago. No, 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 not today, Satan. She's one of my best friend's sister, so she's off limits. So we're playing, boom, Mia wins. Play another game, boom, Mia wins. Now let's be clear, Uno is like 95% a game of chance. She wins five games in a row. I'm starting to get a little heated. You know what, I think I'm gonna beat you 10 times in a row. I've never been beat this many times, not never, not a day in my life. Relax. I'm warning you, chill. She gets nine in a row. We're playing the 10th game and I'm sitting here like, this girl is not gonna beat me. We're play it's, a, it's a game of chance, y'all. How? I'm down to three cards. She has like 10. Then she smiles at me, looks down. Draw two, draw two, draw two, reverse, skip, skip, reverse, reverse, uno. Uno out. This girl is giving me the eye right now. I feel the energy. This can't happen. Would I be okay if Gary hooked up with my sister? Boom! Nom, 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 nom. We just start going at it. It felt so bad, but good, but bad. We were actually making out 35, 40 minutes. I left, and as soon as I left, I texted her. I was like, yo! We can't tell Gary about this air quotes UNO game. I promise I won't say anything. Fast forward a few weeks, Gary gets a new girlfriend. Her name's Amanda. We're at Gary's house chilling. Then Gary says, you and Amanda used to flirt a lot before me and her started dating. I know you and Amanda have hooked up. I swallow all of me and Amanda have never done anything. You could just tell me, I wouldn't be mad. I'm telling you the truth. We've never, you know what? I got a list. Any girl I've ever hooked up with, I got on my phone. Take out my phone, open up my notes, hand him the list. He starts looking at the list. Um. Uh, 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 why is my sister's name on this list? Caught red handed. I look at Mia. Mia looks at me. Amanda's looking at me. Gary's dad comes out of nowhere. He's staring at me. Thank God Gary just laughed it off. He wasn't even mad. True story. Not for nothing. From this day forward, I made sure Gary never saw my sister again. Like, not even in the same room, not even in the same house, not even in the same state. You know, just, just as a precaution. So for anybody who's not familiar with the term simp, I heard somebody on Twitch put it in a really good way. You have a dog who loves his owner. The dog's whole world is based around the owner. And then you have that owner who comes home and he's just like, eh. The owner's real busy. He even uses that app, Wags, to get somebody else to come and walk the dog. That dog is just a fraction of the owner's life. That dog is the simp in this equation. The owner is there literally shopping for a cat online. Meanwhile, the dog is there licking the bottom of his feet. Most of us have simped at some point in our life for some way that we found attractive. Let's just keep it 100%. But it's good to recognize if you're currently doing this, 
and course correct. A little while ago, I had a girl hit me up and she was like, Take me somewhere, Chirapaka! You know what I said back to her? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'll take me somewhere tropical because I'm so astarassed. Let's go somewhere like in the Caribbean. She's saying let's like she's going to contribute in any way, shape, or form. For example, if somebody hit you up and said, hey, let's go buy a car, both of y'all show up to the dealership, you look at her and she's like, I didn't bring any money. And fellas, I'm talking to you, this has happened to you before, but in a different way, they probably changed the words around. You probably got a text and it was worded like this. I miss you. Let's go grab a bite. This bait simping where you don't even realize you're simping for somebody, but they bait you in, knowing dang well, they're just using you as a free meal. It sucks because there's actually people out there who do miss you and do want to hang out with you. Let me tell you how I figured out this little plot. This one girl texted me and she was like, are my texts even going through to you? Uh, you're like ignoring me or something. Uh, okay, well what was the last text you sent me? She sends me the screenshot over and I noticed there's a pizza slice next to my name. My first thought was, hold up, wait a minute, this girl thinks I'm a snack. But then my second thought was, hold up, wait a minute. The only time I ever hear from this girl is when it's a I miss you, let's go get some food, and I pay every time. So she hits me with the I missed you, let's get some food. So I'm like, yeah, 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 let's go get some food. As soon as we sit down, I'm like, yo, uh, you got me this time. I paid for the last time, you got me this time, right? Cool. The look on this girl's face is kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ordered my burger. I'm in the mood for ice cream. Made her pay for my ice cream too. This is all a test. I've taken her out dozens of times. Think she might have spent $15 on me total. Tell me why come that was the last time this girl has ever asked me to go out to eat. Mm, peculiar. And you want to know what really messed me up? I was on Twitter one day and then I saw this. And then I was like, hold up, oh, wait a minute. I've been possibly simping out here. Even for friends. Everybody's out here talking about, oh, you're simping for this Twitch person, and you're simping, simping only fans. Nobody ever talks about unbalanced friendships and us out here simping for our friends. Let's, let's discuss. And if you're like me, you put 100% in and you go out of your way for everybody in your circles, but you can start getting taken advantage of real easy when you do that. Not everybody's like me in this sense, but I'd much rather have no friends than a gang of fake friends. And I feel like it's my responsibility that if I'm gonna talk about this, I need to also talk about friends out there who are doing too much. There are some annoying friends out there. If you come on too strong, you, you, you're gonna end up pushing people away from you. There's this girl I met, really cute girl, really fun, great personality. After we met, we started hanging out everywhere. Dave and Buster's, the movies. I pay for everything, this is how I roll. Then all of a sudden I notice she starts bringing her best friend around. Cool, now I'm paying for all of us and we're going everywhere chilling. It's a great friendship, group chat, everything. And then I see that tweet and I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. Every time we hang out, every time we talk, every time we even do anything is when I initiate conversation in the group chat. Let me just fall back and then see how long it takes for them to initiate something in the group chat. I have not heard from these two girls since. The one time I decided to test this friendship, it was paper thin. If you have somebody who is literally sponsoring all your extravaganzas, you can't even raise a thumb? Y'all couldn't even pull a, I miss you, let's grab a bite? Once? Let me drop a Uno reverse on y'all real quick. In some cases, it's okay to simp. I meet this girl, we start talking, and we start talking on the phone a lot. And then one time we're on the phone and I'm like, hey, let me let you go. Uh, I'm finna go watch Walking Dead. Side note, this is back when it was good. So this was on a Friday. Hang up the phone. Don't hear from her until like Monday. She hits me up. So, um, I watched Walking Dead. Let's talk about it. You said you didn't watch the show. Yeah. But like, you mentioned it on the phone that you were gonna go watch it. So I figured, oh, if he's into it, I'll give it a shot too. And I'm all caught up. Hold up. Wait a minute. You watched six years of Walking Dead episodes over the weekend because I just mentioned it in passing? Yes, <laughs> yeah. That's some hardcore simp behavior, y'all. So what I did, I was like, you're not gonna outfriend me, okay? You name any show, any show, and I will watch the trailer for it. 
kidding. No, I told her, name any episode, I'll watch the entire first season. It's okay to simp for somebody if they're gonna simp for you back. This other time, I was on my Instagram story and I was trying to get a hold of this game and it was sold out everywhere and they didn't have digital downloads for this game. And I'm on my story talking about, guys, I can't find this game anywhere, I'm stressed. This girl saw my story, DM'd me and she said, hey, I looked up the game, I found it, I can go pick it up, buy it for you, and send it to you. She refused to let me pay her for it, but I was like, yeah, yes, I want this game. Months later, I come to find out, this girl found a game and it was out of town. She drove an hour to pick it up, and then an hour back and then mailed it to me. This girl did a few more things after that. I'm not gonna get into it on this video. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Fast forward, I'm looking on her story and she's like, I want this PC so bad, but I don't has the monies. There's a $1,500 computer. Venmoed her right then and there, no hesitation. And if you guys don't pay attention to anything I've said in this video, just hear me on this one. Some people around you are gonna celebrate you. Some people are just gonna tolerate you. And it's a very good idea to figure out who's gonna do which. All right, somebody in the last video said they appreciate how Swoozy puts on a whole fit to sit in a room and talk. Well, uh, we don't do things halfway over here, Claire. You have different circles. You have your family, you have your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you have your inner circle of friends, and then next layer and so on and so on. In one of these circles, you might have a toxic friend in there. Thing is, there's a lot of toxic people out there who are very charismatic and very cool, and that's how they infiltrate your circle. You'll never meet a toxic person for the first time and hear them say, <laughs> Let's go kidnap puppies. Another sign to look out for is they're never the villain. They are always the victim. The toxic friend I had in my circle, we're gonna call him Eric. He still has some friends convinced that he's not toxic. I started getting a little suspicioso the second time we hung out. And you know how it is, your friend brings some rando into your squad hangs and they're like, hey, this is Eric, everybody. The second time Eric came around, he said something that tipped me off. Oh man, you guys are awesome. Thanks for being so nice, because all my other friends, they just cut me off. Instant flag. Holla, 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 holla. Everybody in your group of friends got together and decided to just cut you off all at the same time? Yup. Warning, warning. Because either one of two things are happening. Either all of them are the problem, or you are the problem. And one thing I know about toxic people is they're manipulators. They'll do something wrong and then try to convince you that you're in the wrong. And something else you need to look out for is they're very self-serving. They always want you to do stuff for them, or in some cases they only hit you up when they need something, but you can count on one hand the amount of times they've gone out of their way to do something for you. One of the friends in the squad was moving to a new building. They text a group chat, hey guys, I'm moving to Hollywood on Sunday, can anybody help? I text back saying, got you fam. Then they said, hey Eric, I'm actually moving into your building, can you help? Por favor. Now I'm gonna be in Long Beach all day with my girlfriend. As we're moving boxes up and down, the elevator door is open and guess who he's, yup, Eric, not with his girlfriend, not in Long Beach. Strike one. Now some of my circles, I have friend circles made up of only girls. I'm hanging out with some of these girls. Eric sees my Instagram story. Yo, you need to introduce me to so-and-so. I love her videos. Ask them if they're all free to hang out tomorrow. Now, I'm not fully aware of his toxic levels just yet. I'm still sussing him out. I introduce him, we all hit it off. He's like, yo, 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 let's start a group chat. About a week later, the girls text me, hey, we're by your condo, can we come up? Again, on my Instagram story, he sees we're all hanging out and he feels some type of way about it. Wow, thanks for the invite. Is he joking or being for real? And he's like, no, 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 it's cool. Five minutes later, Eric has left the chat. Then something happens. All the girls that were there, they all stop what they're doing and they all start texting him individually like, oh my God, no, stop. I noticed this and I'm like, everybody stop what you're doing. Guys, this is exactly what he wants. This man has hung out with y'all once. He's acting like this because he wants to be the center of attention. Think about it. If this is how he's acting after hanging out with y'all once, y'all feed into this now and he's gonna have y'all wrapped around his pinky forever. So then they were like, dang, you're probably right. And they all stopped texting him, but see you right too. One night we're having squad hangs, it's movie night. And you know how it is when you're with a group of friends and you're trying to pick a movie, that person's seen it and these two people haven't seen it. And you're trying to find a good movie that nobody's seen that everybody can agree on. So then we just say, all right, Eric, you pick. Eric picks that scary movie, The Boy, about that possessed doll. 
15 minutes into the movie, Eric goes, yo, this movie sucks. Uh, Alexis, give me your keys, I'm leaving. Um, no, if you wanna leave, call an Uber. We're not even gonna talk about how this man picked the movie and is leaving now. So now we gotta pause the movie because this whole thing breaks out and he's getting mad because she won't give him the keys to her car. So he calls an Uber, he's mad, he leaves, and Alexis starts feeling bad. And as she goes to text him, I'm like, everybody stop! Emergency squad meeting, right now. Now this is the first time I'm voicing any concerns about Eric to any of our friends, so I'm a little concernical that I'm gonna look like the bad guy here. So I bust out all my notes and I share them with the group. Turns out, they all have stories too. All right, now I have confirmation. This dude is actually kind of toxic. That's strike three for me, bro. Okay, you're out. Problem is, some of your toxic friends are rooted in so deep that they're almost unavoidable. So you gotta keep seeing them and the only way to avoid being around them is to not show up to squad hangs. I said my piece though, so the squad can't say they're unaware. I have spoken. In future hangs, I start noticing Eric's doing this thing where he's trying to get the group to cancel certain people who have done him wrong. Yo, Omar is shady. Omar did me dirty. Yo, you watch yourself around Omar. Just keep, keep your distance. The dude is shady. Then I notice people in our squad starting to avoid this person. I mean, I said my piece. I voiced my concern. I have spoken. So fast forward, it's Eric's birthday and we're all hanging out. I bring my friend girl. Tell him happy birthday, give him a present. Me and my friend girl stay on this side of the room. He stays on that side of the room. I'm not being antisocial, but I'm not being a social butterfly. Somehow, a debate starts. He says he never said something. My friend girl is like, uh, actually, you said this on Twitter. Let me find the tweet real quick. As she starts scrolling, Eric, you could see him realizing that he went through all this huffing and puffing and is sinking in that he's about to be proven wrong in front of everybody in this room on his birthday. So this dude explodes. I don't care what you find. I never said it. You misunderstand what I'm saying. Blah, 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 blah. Snapped at her. Say whatever you want to say. Do whatever you want to do. To me, check your tone when you're coming at my friends. I'm very protective. I feel... My inner thug jump. I catch him and sit him back down. But at this point, I get involved. Eric, you said it. I've seen the tweet she's talking about. I've heard you telling the story. Chill. But in that moment, dude was done. That is Steve right for. I have spoken. I'm gonna challenge y'all to do something. When you cut somebody out, keep them in a position to where you can help them, but they can't hurt you or take advantage of you. Limit their access to you. I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not easy. There's a million lessons to learn from a million people around us. It's important to not just have people come in and exit your life and you learn nothing. Fast forward to a few weeks ago. So you remember Omar, the dude that Eric told us to distance ourselves from? I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw a shirt and I thought about him. So I called him up like, hey man, I need your shirt size and I need your address. I wanna send you a random care package. Randomly just wanted to do something nice for him. Swooze, are you serious right now? You have no idea how much this means to me right now, bro. I'm going through a lot. And not for nothing, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Eric told me and a few other people that you were shady and we need to like keep our distance from you, but bro, clearly you're a real one. Oh, he said that? Low key, I'm starting to think he's the shady one. I have said my piece, I have voiced my concerns, I have spoken. So this is my I'm pretending to be a therapist on the internet outfit. Do you like it? I'm the kind of guy who knows what he wants and how he wants it. I got big dreams, I got drive with that being said, I have a lot of insecurities, and I'm gonna tell you guys a little story about how recently I fell into a little simp pocket and ended up crying like a little punk. And not just in front of my friends, cause I, I did that. I cried in front of friends and a bunch of total randoms. That crying, that you gotta go find a window and put your hand on it while you cry. That kind of crying. It's like, I thought I had this simp stuff under control. It's basically when you bring forward a certain energy and that person of interest is not matching that energy. You're bringing 90%, they're bringing 10%. Reciprocation, because I've learned this can happen in the middle of a relationship or even in the fourth quarter. You're that dog waiting at home in front of the door all day, waiting for his human. Human gets home, meh, that dog's a simp. The simping ain't pimping. My main goal is to protect my heart. So for a little over a year, I've been single but taken, but single. I met this girl, we be kicking it, and she was just chill about everything. I don't think I saw anything ever bother this girl. We're, we're gonna call her New York girl, and we're gonna stop there because any more details, and y'all gonna go down to the police station, you're gonna have a whole bulletin board with the red ribbons and the strings. I know how y'all are, y'all got Safari open already, and let's say, no, just listen, let's relax. Just enjoy the story, okay, it's tea time.
and I will go on wax right now and say everything that happened is my fault. So, you know, I had New York Girl and then I had other friend girls, but the more I hung out with New York Girl, the less I wanted to hang out with these other friend girls. So then the friend girls would start sending me texts like, I miss you, can I come over Friday or Saturday? I'm here hitting them back like, hmm, I'm busy that day. Like, that's what's starting to happen. I'm not trying to be out here on no simp stuff, okay? So I'm always watching people's energy and I'm trying to match it. If I fly into your town and you pick me up from the airport, when you come to visit me, I pick you up from the airport. You buy me flowers, I ain't buying you flowers, what I look like. That's past the girlfriend line right there, okay? I'm from the streets. Don't let the cleanup confuse you. I'm from the trenches, okay? I didn't see grass till the fourth grade. It was street, sidewalk, dirt. And I definitely didn't see no flowers until I was like 17 and a half years old. We could go into trust issues and all that fun stuff. We're just gonna skip all that because we're gonna get to the good stuff, me crying. You catch flights, not feelings. But stupid me, one day, woke up and I got the thought, you know what, like one day if she randomly gets a boyfriend and is done with me, that's gonna like suck, like not being with her. I'm like 100% taking her for granted, so I should probably put a ring on it. I don't tell her this, but I actually start really liking this girl. My plan is I'm gonna go there, let her know how I feel. I wanna put a ring on it, so I tell her, yo, let me just fly out, we'll kick it for three and a half days, boom. But in reality, I'm gonna fly out there, let her know how I feel, and we kick it for 10 days. That's the plan. So this is either gonna be a really short trip or a really long trip. So I get there and I let her know that I'm gonna be there for 10 days and her reaction, I noticed a little mm. A day and a half after I get there, my sus radar starts going off like flags everywhere. I'm gonna keep it 100p with y'all. My sus radar started going off weeks before. But again, that's just your inner Batman trying to put stuff together. You don't have any evidence. You're gonna look crazy. But anyways, that's a different story for a different video. I'm not trying to put her business out on the street, so we're gonna skip a bunch of details here. On day three, I wake up in my hotel. She's off with her roommates, and she's with them all day. We're not talking four, five, six, seven hours. I mean... <laughs> All day. Mind you, these are the same group of people that you see every day. I fly across the country to come see your dumb butt, and then you pick hanging out with them over hanging out with me? Word? I don't know about y'all, but to me, that's extremely disrespectful. That's just to me. My two little cousins, Mina and Malik in Atlanta, they love me. They're always calling me like, Donde, please come see us, we miss you. I flew over Atlanta like, bye. My gaming buddies in Texas, I flew right over Texas, bye. These guys are always on Discord like, bro, we miss you so much, we haven't seen you since like the fourth grade when we saw grass for the first time, you remember that? I flew over my friends, I flew over my family to come see you. And it was at that moment that I realized, simp, party of one. I'm the puppy in my simp video waiting for their human to get home. And simpin' ain't pimpin', yam shan. And this is how I transitioned slowly into the simp position without even knowing. So she gets back to my hotel room around 1.20 am. And I'm just like, oh, so how was your day? And she's like, it's fine, how was yours? Total deflection. When she gets out of the shower, I pull my Batman cards. I go in the room and I'm just like, uh, so are we gonna talk about this other dude or nah? And she's over here like, what, 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 what? what? Well, how'd you know there's another dude? Uh, well, I was a lifeguard for six years and I'm an animator. So pretty much all I do is read the room and study people's behaviors. I'm assuming it's one of your new roommates. We gonna talk about it or not? We're adults, you're technically single. You can do whatever you want. And this is her response. Well, he likes me. I don't really like him. And I'm sitting here listening like, hmm, 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 hmm. So essentially you're telling me, this is the dude you don't have to worry about, right? Because every time I've heard that before. So then she says to me, she says, you know what, tomorrow I'm just gonna shut it down. It's, not, it's nothing, but I'm just gonna shut it down. And I'm here thinking, if it's nothing, cut this dude off in a text. No, 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 no. I need to do this face to face. Listen, you're single, I'm single, everybody's single, we're adults. If you want to be with this dude, be with this dude. No, 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 no. I would never work because of blah reasons. Okay, that's fine, whatever. And me skipping so many details is really gonna water down the emotional effect of how I reacted, but still, again, we're just keeping it pushing. We're getting to the T. Then she says to me, she says, you know, tomorrow I'm just gonna leave early and go back to the house and cut it off and we're good. I wake up the next day, she gone. She's gone for about six and a half hours. And then she comes back, walks into the doorway, and I see her, and I'm just like, so how did it go? She walks in and goes, 
There's no easy way for me to say this, but me and you, we're done. She walks over, grabs her bag, and heads for the door. And I'm just like... Hmm. Plot twist? Literally, that exchange, it was like a 10 second exchange, like, hey, me and you are done. And she was trying to bounce like that. You're just gonna come in here, grab your bag, and leave? Like... You ain't even gonna offer me a bro fist? All those trips we went on and all those hundreds of hours invested, I don't deserve an explanation or even any closure. NYC girl doesn't have a voice in this story, so I'm gonna give her a little bit of a voice. I had ample opportunity to lock this girl down and I didn't. Could have put a ring on it, but I didn't. Just because now all of a sudden I want to, I can't expect everybody's gonna operate on my timeline. So that's why I say technically this is all my fault. However, comma, do me one little favor. Let me know you got something else going on before I get on a plane. If you put me in a position where you gotta choose between me and the other dude, choose the other dude. I want you to be happy. I'm gonna look trying to hold on to somebody that doesn't wanna be with me. Oh, so you're just gonna keep texting that other dude? You think you're gonna be happier with him? Yeah, okay. Bye. So I go over to the window and I'm watching her walk to her car and I feel it bubbling, but I'm like, no, hold it in. Hold it down, man. You are not going to cry. Do not put your hand on that glass and cry. No. Don't have me out here looking stupid, please. Let me jump on wax and give New York girl a little bit more of a voice. I don't know if this is her personal thoughts or not, but I could imagine it's not a fun feeling being locked in the always maybe category and being locked in there for a year plus. I imagine that's not a fun spot, especially when you've tried to voice going beyond just that. So I'm sitting there in the hotel room by myself and I bust out my best Owen Wilson, wow, I'm here for seven more days by myself, wow. Nah, nix that. Cancel my flight, go downstairs to the front desk, cancel my hotel room, book the next flight out of there, call an Uber, pew! So I'm sitting there at the gate, mask on, hoodie up, and I'm sitting there and I can just feel my chest getting tight. But I'm not gonna cry though, okay? Not today, because I technically didn't even date this girl. And I'm definitely not crying over somebody that I didn't even date. Y'all, there was no music playing in this entire airport, but I'm guessing the airport DJ was somewhere looking at surveillance cameras and he was seeing me and he was like, this guy right here, he looks like a really sad simp. I should play some love songs. Cause all of a sudden I hear, I power through Lana, and the very next song starts to play. Where are you now that I need ya? Actually, let me dial it back a little bit, because I sounded exactly like Lana and Bieber right there, and I don't want to get any copyright strikes on my channel, so moving forward, I'm just not going to try as hard, okay? All right. I'm not going to cry, okay? I'm not going to cry. This is Sparta. The third song comes on. Bang, 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 bang. Cause I really need somebody, I know you need somebody. And I couldn't hold it in anymore, okay? A tear, a thug tear, singular, dropped down from my left eye. There was this one girl who was sitting right across from me and she was just staring at me. There's a rule. When you're out in public and you randomly make eye contact with a complete stranger, you just look away. <laughs> Nobody told her about the rule today cause she was just there like. So then I'm just like bump this nonsense. I'm putting on my headphones. And if you're like me, you put about five to 10 songs into your rotation at a time, and you play those same songs every day over and over. So I start playing those songs, and they just weren't hitting. And I'm like, I just need something ratchet, something that's gonna make me feel empowered, that's gonna make me wanna start a fight in the club. And when you're in this mood, you don't know what you wanna hear, but when you hear it, you know. I can tell you right now what I wanted to hear because I've had some time to think about it. I needed to hear something like, mm -mm 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 -mm. it ain't nothing to cut that chick off. That's what I needed to hear. So I put my songs on shuffle and guess what was the first song that played? I don't even have the original Hotline Bling on my phone. I have the Wii Hotline Bling background music remix. That's the one that was playing. Look it up. Then I get this notification on my watch. You're in a competition with Master. He just finished the workout and he's kicking your butt. I already took one L today. I'm not taking two. So I get up and I just start walking. Hotline Bling is still playing, skip, skip, skip. And I don't wanna be somebody without your body close to me. 
I love how my phone is acting like it can't get dropped off at Salvation Army. You ever had those days when you're having a bad day and you figure, oh, how can it get any worse? And then the universe starts kicking you in the face repeatedly? That. I started my steps and I know I look like a weirdo. I'm over here looking like, come on, come on, more print time in this piece. Save a tooth tiger. Come on, you got this. I feel the universe or God is trying to get me to cry and I'm not gonna break. Skip, skip, skip. I'm hearing all these sad songs. I'm skip, skip, skip. You don't have to say. What? Skip, 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 skip. Now you're just somebody that- Skip, 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 skip. And then it happened. If I could stay Whitney Houston, I will always love you. I really wish I was making this up to be funny, but it wasn't funny, and that was it. Whitney Houston, I will always love you. It starts playing, and I'm just like, oh Jesus, fell to the ground. Okay, I caught myself, okay? I have fast reflexes. I held onto that rail, and I just squeezed it. I couldn't hold it no more, y'all. I had busted out, like I ripped open. I was crying alligator tears. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not stopping. I kept on doing my laps. Everybody that I make eye contact with as I'm doing my laps is staring me down like their phone no longer entertaining. This dude's crying, what's going on here? There was this older couple that I keep walking by and it was obvious they were talking about me. Honey, 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 remember how they were talking about simps on the line? I think that's one of them right there. First, the airport DJ's against me, then my cell phone's against me, and then I get a call from Lana. So I see a gate that has nobody in it, so I walk over, take out my phone, and I'm trying to do that thing where you answer the phone and you talk, but you don't sound like you're in the middle of crying. And this is me. Hello? Uh, yeah. How did it go? I forgot to tell you guys. Um, so, because of my trust issues, I haven't dated anybody in over five years. So I might have told one, two, or seven friends that I'm going out to New York and I'm most likely going to try to put a ring on it. So they were waiting in great anticipation to hear how things were going in New York. Remember that part where I was just like, don't have me out here looking stupid? That. Lana was one of those people that I told, so she's calling a check-in on progress. Have been better. Are you crying? <laughs> Lana. All of a sudden, you just hear Lana typing on a keyboard. I got. What's her last name? All I need is her last name. Just tell me her last name. I got you, boo boo. Whenever you're crying and talking to a friend, there's always something that you have to repeat over and over. My phrase on that call was, "It's always for some other dude, Lana. It's always for some other dude." And I started feeling myself, and I added a second phrase. I'm never good enough, Lana. I'm never good enough. Because it's always for some other dude, Lana. I know you've been on the receiving end listening to one of your friends cry on the phone. And it's never a comfortable situation. And I'm crying and I'm explaining everything that's happened to Lana. And then I realize I'm starting to talk a little bit louder. Let me look around and see how quiet I need to be talking. And there's another dude sitting right behind me. This dude is like sitting back to back with me. I didn't see him or hear him come around. He just poofed. I couldn't see his face, but you could tell the dude was sitting there like... And guys, I'm not making this up to be funny. This all actually happened. The DJ's messing with me. My phone's messing with me. Lana called me. This dude randomly is eavesdropping on my conversation. I'm over here crying over some girl that I didn't even date. If that's not some sim stuff, I don't know what is. And Lana's a good friend, so she calms me down. And then they started boarding my plane, and I got on, and I'm never going back to New York. Just kidding, the food there is too amazing. So some of you guys might have seen back in the new year when I was posting on my socials, like, hey guys, I'm having some girl problems, not really feeling creative. This is the reason why I wasn't able to put out a video between January and March. Me and New York girls still have not talked. I have no closure. I have no idea what's going on. She let me know that when I'm ready to talk, that we can talk. I just take a really long time to heal, so maybe in like four years I'll hit her up like, Hey, so um, you remember that day? <laughs>
And yeah, things could have been much. Uh, oh, look at the time, guys. That's all we have for this therapy session. But real talk, guys. Thank you for being patient with me from January until now. Believe it or not, it's been a very rough patch for me. We're we're seeming like we're in the clear right now. I just have to make sure that my heart was right before I can get back on my YouTube. You feel me? All right, love you guys lots. Cut it. It's a wrap. There you go. Five. Four, three, wait, wait, two. No, wait. <laughs> in seventh grade, I went to this private school and I was one of three black kids in my class. It was pretty much mandatory that I played on the basketball team. I didn't even really have to try out. I kind of just walked onto the court and they were like, Oh, thank God you're here. The only problem was during the game, I would get crazy anxiety. All them people and all the eyeballs are staring at you. So I get the ball, shoot, air ball the majority of times. One thing I was really good at though, was passing behind the back, no look. Only problem was, none of my teammates were ever expecting it. Do my behind the back, no look passes, and I just fly out of bounds. Cause I'm shooting air balls, and whenever I get the ball, I'm just passing it all crazy. And then after a while, people just stop passing me the ball during the games. But private school basketball league rules were, every player on the team had to play for at least two minutes. So I'd be there, and at one minute and 59 seconds on the dot, Okay, Adani, get out, sub out, sub out, come on. Somebody go in for him, I don't care who, just anybody, somebody go in. So I got to the point where my coach, Miss Dawson, would bend the rules and not even play me some games. Why am I even here? I could be home playing video games and watching anime. So how I worked at our school was Miss Dawson was the coach for the middle school basketball team and the elementary school basketball team. Some on the playground one day after school on the basketball court, it was me, Shane, Robbie, Jeremy. Some of y'all have been around, you've heard these names before. It's me and Shane versus Robbie and Jeremy. I'm young Kobe, young LeBron, young Jordan, all of the above. Now Shane's my cousin, so we're on the same Wi-Fi. We play all the time. We're in sync. No look over the shoulder. He catches all my passes. Fade away jumper, three, boom, whatever. Balling out here, cousin NBA 2K, holla at me. The very next day, I'm in the hallway walking to my next class and Miss Dawson runs up on me. Psst. Me, yes. I saw you on the playground. Okay. Where's all that during the game? I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't know. You're short for a middle schooler. I have this crazy idea that I'm pretty positive you could pass for an elementary school student. How about I put you in a game in the elementary basketball league and we just see how you do. And for any of you guys that are outside of America, kindergarten through fifth is elementary, sixth through eighth is middle school, ninth through twelfth is high school. So I'm a middle schooler and she's trying to have me play against the elementary school kids. I hadn't hit puberty yet, so she kind of right, like I am short for a seventh grader. Now, this a Christian school and I'm pretty sure there's something in the Bible about this. I mean, I'm literally on my way to chapel. Our elementary team, they suck. I don't even want to come to the games. If they let me phone in and forfeit, I would. So, you know, let's just try one game and just see how it goes. You can't ever tell anybody about it. Uh, I mean, sure. What's the worst that could happen? So we show up to our first game where we're going to be cheating. And Miss Dawson pulls me aside before the game. Act like an elementary school kid, okay? Don't go out there and make it obvious. Win. But keep it close, okay? I go out onto the court and instantly the anxiety is gone. Apparently it was all in my head. I'm about to end this whole team's career tonight. So we start the game. I see why our team was O and every game. These kids were hot doo-doo. Don't y'all practice? It looked like this was the first time they've ever played basketball. So this was an away game, all right? And there was one kid on the other team who was the superstar, the pretty boy. Pretty much the only kid scoring on their team. First of all, this kid had the ugliest jump shot in the world. I don't know how these shots are going in. So you know, I'm holding back the whole time because Miss Dawson said to keep it close. This is not even my final form. Any of you guys who ever babysat, when you're playing with little kids, you hold back. So you know, I'm trying to pass the ball, I'm being a team player. I'm trying to let them do most of the scoring. I'm just playing defense. It was all fun and games. I'm just like dribble down the court and I look up at the scoreboard and I'm like, oh, we're down by three. Let me pop a three real quick. Eh, boom! 
the pretty boy came out of nowhere, slapped my junk into the stands, and it was so dramatic, I just fell for no reason, like, oh my god! Everybody in the crowd's like, oh! Even the ref ran over, <laughs> no, 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 not today! I'm here like, oh, that was a mistake. I looked over at Miss Dawson like Rock Lee. Dawson, katsu! Come on! <laughs> Ref didn't call no foul. All I know is I fell to the ground like, oh! You know, there was a lot of emotions in the room. I just got dizzy and just fell over. All I know is when we inbounded that ball, <laughs> I tell you what. You know them gifts of the NBA players? Like, Blah! That, me. Three point, jump shot, layup, Euro step. Toward the end of the game, my team wasn't even coming down court. It was me, 1v5. So that game ended. Uh, the audience was not happy. Next game we went to, it was obliteration. And after like two or three games, I just stopped trying to be subtle. And I was just feeling myself every single game. At one point, there was one game where I would just start playing horse in my head just to challenge myself. All right, I'm gonna run down, off the heezy this kid, break that kid's ankles, spin, and then go down the court and do it. If there's any home video that ever surfaces of me playing at one of these games, guarantee you it looked like NBA Jam in real life. Whoa! Boom! Shaka laka laka laka! He's heating up! So there's one game, it was gonna be a double header. The middle schoolers and the elementary school kids were gonna play back to back. Now remember, I used to be on the middle school team. We finally had to tell some people what was going on. The kids on the middle school team are gonna see me playing on the elementary school team. Miss Dawson, you know, she's a little scammer, so she covered it up really good. It would have been okay for me not to play that game, but I think Miss Dawson got too used to the feeling of these nonstop dubs. Okay, so like, one of the kids on the elementary school team hurt his left pinky toe and you need a certain number of people to be on the team in order to play. So, um, Adonde is gonna step in and play on the elementary school team just for this game, okay? Keep your mouth shut, you ain't seen nothing, you ain't heard nothing. You know what happens to them snitches, right? So the middle school team goes out, they play. Some on the bench like, <laughs> then it's our turn. Everybody else on the team is just my backup dancers. So once we got like a 30 point lead, Miss Dawson puts me on the bench so the other kids could run around and fumble. This kid from the middle school team comes over. All I remember is this kid had really big teeth. Mm, what grade are you in? Fifth? You're in fifth grade. Yes. Mm -hmm. And walks away. So the game ends, we beat them by like nine trillion points. We're on the bus driving back to school. Robbie ducks down under his seat and comes back up. Jeremy Ware, 33% F. Jeremy Ware, 40% F. Jeremy Ware, 55, Jeremy, you're getting better. Shut up, where are you getting these from? I don't know, they're in the crease of my chair and underneath my chair. So we all check our book bags and our bus was completely vandalized. Pages were ripped out of my textbook. Everybody's stuff had been messed with on that bus. About a week later, I'm in class, and guess who walks in? The Big Tooth Kid. He walks in with our principal. Some of you guys who had your stuff vandalized, we caught the person who did it. He's here to apologize. I'm here to say I'm sorry for... And then he looks at me, and then he looks at the class that I'm in. I think he put two and two together, and he realized I'm in a middle school class. So in my head, I'm thinking to myself, million percent this kid is gonna snitch. I don't even tell Miss Dawson. That would have been the smart thing to do. I don't say nothing to her. All I know is we go to our next game, and before I rip off my pants like I'm in the NBA and get on the court, Miss Dawson's like, no, 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 chill, 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 chill. What? We're not gonna start you this game. So I'm sitting on the bench, first quarter ends, I'm still not in the game. So as she walks by me, I'm like, what's up? Let me, let, yo, put me in, coach. You see that guy over there? No, 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 don't look, don't look, don't look. He's been staring at you since you walked in. And he's not even watching the game. I think he's a narc. A narc? What is that? Chill, 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 chill. Just fall back, fall back, young blood, fall back. Sit down, be humble. He looks like you see, I can smell him. He smells like bacon. I'm thinking to myself, yo, that might be a scout. Forget high school, forget college, I'm skipping all that. He probably heard about your boy. I'm going right to pro. 
So it becomes clear to me by the fourth quarter that, I mean, even I couldn't come back how, how bad we were losing. So I didn't play that game. Next day in the hallway, Miss Dawson comes up. Yeah, so I think it's probably best that we, you know, go our separate ways. I can feel the heat coming down on me. So, you know, we had a good run though, right? Yeah, we had a good run. Keep your head up, pimp. And that was pretty much it. And next thing I know, Miss Dawson just mysteriously quit. Apparently she was giving one of the high school players a ride home. She was doing this regularly and the school found out about it. They weren't too happy. And her husband found out about it. He wasn't too happy either. So after that, I just retired. I couldn't deal with all the politics and all the corruption in the leagues. Had that never happened, I, I probably would have gone pro. Straight up. A lot of guys out here in the gaming community just have a thing for girls who are into video games, like our kryptonite. For any of you ladies who've ever jumped into a lobby and said something on the mic, and every guy's like, Wah! like the, everything in the game becomes about you, you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. I go to GameStop one day, pick out my game, go to the register, cute girl at the register, Wah! but I play it cool. And I just grab my free copy of Game Informer, take my game, and I'm out. So a few weeks later, new drop, go to GameStop, get to the register, the girl goes, you look familiar. Have you seen Avatar? <gasps> yeah? I'm not an Avatar. Oh. Have you seen Avengers? <gasps> yeah? I'm not an Avengers either, boo, I'm sorry. Do you watch YouTube? Yeah. Are you swoozy? What's up? Side note, these Game Informer magazines, are they free? Cause every time I come in here, I grab them. I don't see a barcode on them. No, you gotta, you gotta sign up to get them. Did you sign up? Are you part of our rewards? Nope, okay, gotta go, bye. Go home, check my Twitter DMs, GameStop girl messaged me. So we chit chat for a few weeks, and then one night I just hit her up like, yo, you down for some noms or what? She's like, yeah, downs. So we go to BJ's Brewery. So, uh, do you have a girlfriend and you just don't talk about her on your videos? You have a lot of stories about girls. Well, as soon as I get in a relationship, please believe my stories about girls are gonna start, you know, reducing a lot. I'm not out here chasing girls. I'm too busy out here trying to get that paper, the bread, the cheddar, the money, the guap. Lo siento, not lo siento. What about you? You got a man or no? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. How long y'all been dating? Well, we're married actually. Burr? You used to be going on dates with random boys from the internet and you're married? You seem kind of young to be married. Yeah, we kind of rushed into it. We got married when we were 19. Oh, I see. He loves your videos. We like binge watch your videos together. Does he know you're out with me right now? No, he's out of town. And now, do y'all find that weird? Because I find that kind of weird that, sh you know, if my girl was out with some dude she met on the internet and didn't tell me, I might feel some type of way about that. And I'm not crazy, right? So just to cut any kind of situation from forming, I say, listen, next time we hang out, how about I meet him? So fast forward two weeks, I go to her apartment, I meet her husband, super cool dude. We play Smash Brothers, we play Mario Party, we play Mario Kart. I'm not out here trying to brag or nothing, but you know, can't nobody touch me. So I beat them all, I went undefeated the whole night. I put both of them in a box. But you know, that's not important to the story. Anyways, we go to BJ's Brewery. Side note, BJ, step your game up, cause the food quality lately has been Slacking. I thought she was gonna bring her husband. She didn't. It's just her. So first thing I ask when we sit down, where's Sawyer? He's out of town. Cool. Um. Cool. Yo, is this dude a Russian spy? Why he always out of town? Yeah, my husband doesn't really trust me. Why not? I cheated on him. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Uh. You do it? You, you do it? Yeah, me and my coworker, we just got to know each other really well. And then one day after work, you know, he walked me to my car and I just cheated on him. Did he ever find out? Yeah, I told him. Okay, that was the first time I cheated on him. Wait, you cheated on him more than once? Yeah, the second time, you know, I was just, was an, they hired a new guy at work and then I just, 
We started talking and I got to know him. These girls ain't loyal. Did he find out about that dude? Yeah, I told him about that one. But then I, so, and then I cheated on him again. It's just these new hires. I just can't stop. You've cheated on your husband three times and he hasn't divorced you? Well, he thinks that if he divorces me that I'm gonna go out here and just hook up with a bunch of dudes. Uh, what does he think you're doing now? Are these dudes not scared your husband's gonna show up at work one day and mess them all up? I don't know. So I take her back to her apartment. We're there, we're talking. It's like six in the morning now, sun starts coming up. Let me go, I'm out. Go to the door, she follows me. I turn around and I go to hug her goodbye. I can't tell you guys what happened next, but let's just say, here's a line and she crossed it. Like she literally took a flying leap over the line. So I'm driving home now after this just went down, but I feel like what just happened was not okay. So I get home, I text her, probably best if we just don't talk for a little while. We can hang out, but when we do hang out, it's probably best to meet you and your husband are all hanging out in a group setting, okay? Lots of people around, lots of eyewitnesses. Maybe we can all go to church. Then one day I get a text. Hey Adonde, this is Sawyer, Kim's husband. I went through her phone while she was in the shower and got your number. Wanted to reach out and invite you to her surprise birthday party that I'm throwing. Don't tell her. So I'm just gonna assume that he didn't read our last text and just went to her contacts and got my number. Cause if he read the last text, he would have probably had some questions. So I'm like, I right, LMK. One night I'm home, I get this text, I look at my phone and it's Kim. We haven't talked in like months. She sends me this text of her in the bathtub, just like her legs sticking up out the bubble bath. Yo, don't send me stuff like this. Why not? Figured she was alone, so I called her. Now I can't tell her, hey, your husband's going through your phone. Then, because her next question is, how do you know? I'm in a situation where I can't let her know. So I call her up and I'm just like, hey, it's just not gonna be a good look if your husband ever sees you sending other dudes pictures like that. He'll never see, he doesn't even know my password. Let's just pretend he does. Do me a favor and delete our previous text, okay? Her birthday comes, we all go to Dave and Buster's, I spank him some more, I'm a beast, I'm out here ending people's careers, can't nobody beat me. One day at the Blue Random, I get a text from Kim's husband, uh, can you just do me a favor and just stay away from my wife? He didn't sound mad, so I don't know if Kim ever deleted the old text that I told her to delete, I just hit him back, listen bro, I understand, you don't gotta explain, it's cool. I don't know if Kim has told you about our situation, but yeah, it's just she has patterns, blah de blah de blee. I'm traveling a lot the next few weeks, so I'm not even gonna be in town, bro. You good. I'm too busy out here trying to get the paper, the bread, the cheddar, the money. Lo siento, not lo siento. If you follow me, you know when I travel, I put stuff on my story. So Kim saw that I was getting ready to fly back into town. I see you're coming back. I haven't seen you in like forever. Can I pick you up from the airport? Seems harmless, it's been like months. Okay, she picks me up from the airport. As she's driving me to my house, I get this text from her husband. Yo bro, what part of stealing my wife didn't you understand? Keeping my distance, she just gave me a ride. That was it. I'm assuming she was gonna tell you that she's coming to pick me up. So it's not like she was sneaking around behind your back, whatever the case, he still was not happy. As Soon as I finished texting him back, Kim goes, so I'm gonna divorce my husband. Honestly, I've been soul searching and I think that's why I've been cheating on him so much because I'm trying to get him to divorce me, but he won't. First of all, he's a slob, okay? I don't know if you've ever like had a roommate who is like a slob or anything. He is the worst. He comes home, he takes off his pants and his underwear and he throws them right in the middle of the living room and they stay there for days. I'm not your maid, okay? The sink, forks, knives, dishes, everything he touches just the house is a mess. I clean it and the next day it's a mess again. I can't stand that. And when I get to the point where I can't take it anymore, I tell him, I think we need to start talking about going our separate ways. And then he gets all apologetic and then he worships the floor I walk on. And then he's super neat and super clean. And then as soon as he gets comfortable, the cycle starts all over again. 
and I think I just got tired of this cycle constantly repeating so as a way out I think I just started cheating on him so that way he would just let me go and then he wouldn't this is his last chance I'm gonna tell him we need a divorce he's gonna stop being a slob the next time I see his underwear on the floor that's it she went back home and she did exactly what she said she was gonna do she told him I want a divorce he says no baby I'll change give me another chance she gave him that other chance and literally she just like had the hammer in the air waiting to drop it and after a while he went back to being a slob boom she dropped the hammer and finalized it they broke up so then he packed up all his stuff and moved after that she just fell off the grid she stopped using social media every now and then she would go live on twitch she stopped getting on twitch she disappeared for like a year and a half and then resurfaced on instagram with a picture of her engagement ring she found some new dude boom and she seems very happy with this dude the end p.s gamestop i got like 35 game informer magazines here i don't know what y'all want me to do like should i send these back can i keep them i'm not trying to end up in handcuffs here i've been moisturizing i've been exfoliating i'm too pretty for jail now i can't go back Maybe tweet me, let me know what y'all want to do, how y'all want to handle this, and we can go from there.